Hey guys, I've got a short but what should be very useful for you today. Tell me how many times this has happened to you. You buy a brand new PSP game and, you know, the outside looks fantastic. No issues whatsoever. You open it inside, hey, everything's in good condition. You know, very, very minor cosmetic issues that don't really matter. And the disc looks absolutely beautiful you know worst case scenario it's all scratched up on the back which doesn't actually matter as long as there's nothing wrong with the disc which hey look that disc looks pretty clean outside of a fingerprint i left on there you know that won't stop it from running in the psp and yet when you actually put the disc in the psp this happens It just loads infinitely and doesn't actually do anything and never starts. It just gets caught in this infinite loop of trying to read the disc. Now, you would assume that maybe it's scratched, but truthfully, that's not what's wrong. See, PSP games very rarely get scratched because of this housing that they sit in. And yeah, you know, you could strike it right here, but it doesn't really happen to my knowledge. I've actually never found a single PSP disc that would not read for this reason. What's actually wrong is something that you probably didn't notice at first, but if I can get to focus on it, you can see it right there. The plastic is pushed down right here. So it's not flush with the rest of it. I know it's really difficult to see at an angle, and honestly, this thing's auto zoom is not helping me. There we go. See? See that little divot in there? That's because this plastic is pushed down. So rather than laying flat, it's laying kind of like this and pushing against the disc. Now, what you could do is, obviously that means this housing is broken. So what you could do is just straight up replace it with one of these replacement housing things I have right here. Now, to be honest with you, I freaking hate these things. I think they're ugly and they use a different type of plastic than what the actual UMDs use. So I think they might cause some very minor technical issues when the disc is being read, such as very slightly increased load times. But I don't know that for sure. I'm kind of just assuming because whenever I've had discs that use these types of housing, it seemed like the PSP made a lot more noise. So yeah, you could go with this, but I don't like it. Personally, I stay away from these things unless the disc straight up doesn't have a case at all. And then I'll put it in one of these, which is actually why I had this. I had a copy of RV that was just like sitting in nothing. And I stuck it in one of these and it played just fine. Anyways, back to this. As you can see, it's pushed down. Well, truth is, this is pretty common. This happens to a lot of PSP games. In fact, it happened to this copy of Ghost in the Shell standalone complex I have here. Now, I'm going to show you this one in a little bit because it's got my solution on it. And this one also runs. But the easy way to fix this is with that. And I'm going to show you how. Now, this is going to seem really weird. And some of you might be kind of afraid to do it because you're thinking, whoa, whoa, you're going to break that. But the truth is, you're not really going to. You'll be perfectly fine doing this as long as you're gentle enough. You kind of have to have the right amount of pressure. But what you want to do is you want to push the disc from this part and you kind of want to grip your fingernail in between, as you can see, like it's kind of raised right there in the middle. You kind of want to grip your fingernail right there and you want to push on the front and I already felt to do it, so let's do it again from the other side. See, see how it popped back into place? Okay, but the problem is I can just push it right back out. So how do you prevent that? Well, you can't prevent it fully, but what you can do is tape it, which will help it stay in place. Now what I like to do is just get a very small amount, that's about enough, and you wanna put it on 
the actual thing, sorry. I tried to avoid the UMD label sticker. I'm sorry if I was off screen there for a second. You want to put it about like that, flip it over, and do the other side. And yeah, I guess to some people, this kind of looks like trash. I don't blame them really. Um, you know, it does look kind of shitty, but if you just want the games to play them, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. And you might be surprised, but this works like it's brand new now. I'm not even kidding. This was actually one of the first things I discovered. And just to prove it to you, I'm going to put this right back in here. I've actually done this with multiple different games. And while that is loading up, I'll get this one out. As you can see, my copy of Ghost in the Shell standalone complex is the same way. Although I accidentally put tape on the UMD sticker. I think this was the first one I ever did, but if you look... Oh, look! Pinball Hall of Flame is loaded up. So... Just because I kind of showed it off screen. Open back up. There's a disc. And yeah, it loads right up now. Um, this is easily the cheapest solution I've found for this. I mean, it's just scotch tape. I didn't use anything else to do this. No tricks or anything like that. And the thing is, a lot of disc-only games you will find, somebody has, like, kind of pushed down on that part of the UMD. You know, you might do it sometimes when you're, like, trying to get it out of the case. I try to grab it from here and then, like, flip that little notch up and then get it out. Um, honestly, they're kind of awkward to deal with, so I know that this happens a lot where they get broken like that. But, yeah, that's the easy way to fix PSP games with this issue. And, yeah, I actually did just get this game today. This is brand new for my collection, and it would not play when I started it up. So I know this is pretty common. Honestly, that copy of Ghost in the Shell I have is not the only one I've had to do this to. There's been like four or five or six others. A lot of them were like disc-only ones that I ended up getting rid of because I had them already or I didn't need the boxes or whatever. But I hope this helps people out that are just looking to get like some kind of a PSP collection going because a lot of the disc, even if they don't play actually do as long as you know how to fix them.